Yeah. Now, now some churches, I feel like God. Now, this this thing is tricky. Now, some churches, I feel like God might just want it to be small. Like they might be preaching truth and everything, but it's God just wanted to be a small church. But some churches, they always they they constantly getting new people, but they constantly losing people. See, a lot of churches got witchcraft going on. It's people warring against that church. And they they constantly getting new members, but they constantly losing members. See, that that's you know, it's probably some witchcraft going on and and you know, a lot of pastors and people don't know. You know, your own daughter could be a witch. You know what I mean? You could have somebody, <laughs> hey, you could have somebody in that thing. I mean, yeah, man, people don't, man, people don't want to, man, I'm telling you, man. Hey, people, um, yeah, you could have somebody close to you that's a witch. You know what I mean? That's on the devil's side, putting in work. And, and the church can't really grow. New members steady coming, but you can't keep them that long. Or members steady coming, but then members steady going. You know what I mean? Like, got 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 the pastor going in circles, and he don't know. But a lot of pastors ain't filled with the Holy Ghost either, though. <laughs> you know, be a lot of people they not really in the spirit like that. They, a lot of people was appointed to their positions because of faithfulness, which is good. But they not fully equipped for the you know as a as a New Testament believer. You know, they not fully equipped though. But, um, uh, yeah, man, it's a lot of churches got witchcraft spells and different things. And somebody close to somebody, somebody that's planted in the church, putting in work, you know what I mean? And the church can't grow. It's, it's like a revolving door. And then some churches preaching the truth and God just want them to be a small church. You know, I, I think that too, uh, I mean, I don't know why, but, you know, a person had to take that to the Lord. A person got to talk it out with the Lord, man. You know, that that's one thing about a relationship with God. You got to talk it out with the Lord, man. You know what I mean? Whatever the issue, whatever, you know, I talk stuff out with the Lord. Like, God, what you got to say about this? What you got to say about that? You know what I mean? You you got to talk things out with the Lord, man. Get get his point of view. Get his perspective. But, but a lot of Christians do not know about witchcraft. They not... They don't have an in-depth knowledge about witchcraft and and just people that's in partnership with the devil, working against your life, working against your calling, working against your destiny. Like people don't have no knowledge about it. Like we all know about the devil and we all know about warfare and might even know some about demons, but it's people that are agents just like God got agents, ambassadors, the devil got them. Everything that God got, the devil got a, a counterfeit. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's it's it, it really make you think, you know, you got to have your eyes opened and it'll take you to another level about what's going on around you. And, and you just be thinking stuff just it just is what it is or it's just coincidence. Nah, it's forces being waged against you. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's very real, man. I'm not finna uh, go on and on, man. Oh, okay. I'm gonna give you this last thing. Let me read these scriptures out of uh, Ephesians. But yeah, most Christians don't know, but the warfare is very real. It's not just the devil. It's not just demons. It's not just people acting up at random. It's people that's really, in league, really tied in with the devil. They goofy, though. They stupid. If you think that's going to work out for you, the devil is not in the serving people. He don't even want to serve God. So if you think he going to serve you right, if you think it's going to go well with you and the devil going to serve you, you crazy. Jesus was a servant. He did what he did for us in service to humanity and in service to the father. The devil is not that kind of person, man. He don't care nothing about you, man. He ain't trying to serve you. He ain't trying to do nothing for you. He ain't even want to serve God. And look at the position God put him in. God never did nothing wrong to the devil, and the devil had an issue with God. Now, why the heck would a person think the devil is going to care about you? 
phone them crazy, man. <laughs> but let me read these scriptures out of Ephesians just to let you know. As a Christian, the same place of blessing is the same place of warfare. You got to be about that warfare. You got to be about it. But one of your main, the, your main warfare is, is your main warfare is spending time with God in prayer. Spending time with God in the word. Being filled with the Holy Ghost, cause that's what's going. That's what's going to uh, allow you to live, or empower you, not just give you the power, but give you the mind and the will. See, you can have a, you can have the power, but if you ain't got the will, but see, that's what, that's what renews your mind, renew, restore your soul, huh? Your will is part of your soul. Your soul had to be restored, cause sometimes you just ain't got the will to live a totally committed life. You know what I mean? All that had to be restored, man. But living a holy life is, that's one of the main points of warfare. But living a holy life, it's, it's work that got to be put in behind that. Yeah, living a holy life ain't automatic. It's not automatic. You know what I mean? The pool of sin, matter of fact, matter of fact, I heard somebody say, the pool of sin is like gravity. It's natural. You know what I mean? You got to be supernatural to uh to not be pulled down by gravity. You got to create a machine or you got to have wings. It's something supernatural for it got to be some supernatural for you to overcome gravity cuz gravity is the natural force that pull you down. That's how the sin nature is. It's the natural force that's going to have you doing whatever you feel like doing, doing what you want to do disregarding the word and the will of God. So it takes some supernatural for you not to be in bondage to the sin nature. It takes some supernatural for you to rise above the sin nature and walk in the divine nature. You know what I mean? That's supernatural. You know what I mean? That's your time with God. Like I said on the last message, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, that, that's what it takes. But anyway, that's one of your main points of warfare is living a holy life. But living a holy life don't come from nothing. Living a holy life come from intimacy with God and being filled with the Holy Ghost. You need that. People preaching against that. People uh, neglecting that. You know what I mean? But if you want to make successful Christians, you got to get them saved, water baptized, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's the, the, the first principle to building successful Christians. But you can only go so far. A person going to have to put their own work in. Huh, They're going to have to get in that word for they self. And then here go another thing to get tricky. You know, people be looking at different people ministries. But like, I don't really want to. People got different kinds of ministries. Everybody, everybody ain't going to deal with seeing some people got the ministry of exhortation. You know what I mean? Like some, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I took that before God. I was like, God, what you got to say about certain people? You know, they don't really preach about sin, but they really preach a real encouraging message. Like somebody like Joe Osteen, like I'm not going to speak on Joe Osteen. Like I'm, I can't speak on him. Like, Cause once you get on fire for God, you know, sometimes you kind of look at people like, <laughs> but then I'm like, nah, but when I was backslid, you know, I wasn't looking at them funny. But then once you get totally committed, sometimes you get to looking at them funny. Like how come they, you know what I mean? But, but check this out though. Any real Christian, if you serious about your relationship with God, you're going to get in that word for yourself. So even if the preacher ain't preaching about this and that, this is sin, that is sin. Even if the preacher ain't preaching against sin, if you for real about Jesus, you're going to get in the word for yourself and you're going to find out. God going to make sure you find out what's wrong and what's right. Because some people, they so positive, they don't deal with the negatives. But if you serious about your relationship with God, you're going to get in the word. And you're going to find out what's wrong, what, what the negatives are, even if the preacher ain't preaching against it. So it's like, I don't know, because some people really got the, a real live ministry of encouragement. Like nobody can deny that Joel Osteen got a ministry of encouragement. Can't nobody deny that. Now, when you got that kind of ministry, 
Christians can be benefited from it, but even people that ain't Christians or even people that's not totally committed to God can benefit from it. And then I seen a clip where, you know, you, you know how they do. They're going to ask you, like, can a homosexual go to heaven? <laughs> you know, they're going to ask you stuff like that. Like, they're going to ask Joe Osteen that. Now, but, and, and Joe Osteen wouldn't answer it. So then I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, hold up now. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I know you want to encourage people, but, you know, you got to stand on business. But. The only reason they asking them that is because they know the kind of audience that they they know how people flock to him and probably even LGBT people flock to him, too. So they trying to I mean, it's a real question, but they asking the question with malicious intent. You know, what I mean, they asking the question with malicious intent. You know, what I mean, they doing it for the purpose of, I guess, trying to turn those people away from him. You know what I'm saying? They they not asking the question in seriousness. They asking the question with malicious intent, like they try to trap Jesus up in his words a lot of times. Now, the real test, though, is if somebody like Joel Osteen was really having a one on one conversation with a homosexual and they ask him. And then what he tell them, that's the real test. Because when, when you on them TV shows and they ask you something like that, it's a real question, but they 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 not asking you that question with a pure motive. They they asking you that question to uh to turn people away from you. I mean, even though that's the truth, you know what I mean? But cause, cause I was like, nah, you gotta stand on business. Like I, that's what I was thinking. But then I thought about it later. I'm like, hold up. The only reason they asking them that on that platform, it's not for godly intent. They just trying to cause so discord. You know what I mean? So, uh, but if you really a Christian, you, you, you can't just put all the weight on the pastor. You got to have a relationship for yourself and you get to reading through the word. You're going to find out. You're going to find out. You know what I mean? You're going to find out. But yeah, but but the only people they do like that is the people that have big ministries of exhortation and encouragement. A preacher who preach against sin and stuff, they not going to do them like that cuz they already know they already know how they coming. But when God use people like that and and they got such a big crowd because they got such a strong word of exhortation, they they do stuff like that. They get you on a big platform, secular platform and ask you stuff like that but it's not it's for malicious intent though even though that's a real question though you know what i mean so i was like okay so i'm not gonna i can't i can't knock nobody i'm not gonna knock nobody ministry for what they especially if they got a, a encouraging ministry exhortation ministry i'm not gonna knock them for what they don't preach against i'm not I'm not. I'm not going to get caught up in that this time around. Yeah, I, yeah, I was one of them. Yeah, I was one of them. Yeah, I was one of them. But sometimes being backslid, it'll humble you in some ways too, though. And that's a fact. Sometimes being uh, being backslid, it can humble you in some ways. You know what I mean? It can humble you in some ways. I'm not so quick to try to ride on somebody because they don't preach against sin or they don't emphasize holiness. Like everybody got their own different type of ministry, man. But anybody that's really serious about Jesus, you gon' you got to get in the word for yourself. And whatever your preacher don't preach about, you'll get the knowledge through the words yourself. Especially if it's some basic like what's a sin and is this a sin and you know what I mean, basic stuff like that. You'll get it in the word if they not preaching it. If you really serious about Jesus, okay. Now another thing. I, I, I don't know what folks got going on behind closed doors. All I can do is judge the word. Now, I know when I hear something janky, I know when I hear something that's not Bible or I might or somebody might have a revelation and, and you can bring the revelation out through the scripture. You know what I mean? But I, I know when I hear something that ain't Bible or like, nah, but uh, so I, I judge the word. I can't judge people lifestyle, what they got going on behind the scenes. Uh, I can't judge that, you know, unless God showed me in the spirit, 
But other than that, I can only judge the word that's coming out of their mouth. I can't judge if they love money, <clears throat> if they got some money schemes going on behind the scenes, or if they done made deals, or if they a Freemason, <laughs> or if if people do weird stuff behind the scenes, I can't really judge that. All I can judge is the word. And, and you know, they got to judge their own life because you can preach to others and be a castaway. Facts. You know what I mean? So I can't judge their life, though, if they... And then, cause like people say, because certain people, people with ministry of exhortation, they get embraced by the world. You know what I mean? T.D. Jakes, you know, they say a lot of bad stuff about him because... But uh, they say a lot of bad stuff about him because he kind of get embraced by the world. Uh, a lot of people in the hip hop industry and stuff, but that don't mean that that don't mean he's not a man of God. That's how it is when you got the ministry of exhortation. You always encouraging people. So even people that's not really serving God, even people that's not totally committed to God can still embrace you because you still encourage them. That doesn't mean now. I'm, I don't know. I don't know, though. I don't know if he got stuff going on behind the scenes, if he a Freemason. I don't know. But I do know when you got that kind of ministry of encouragement, a lot of time the world will embrace you. But you got to remember, too, they said Jesus was a friend of sinners. You know, Jesus, Jesus was an encouraging dude. A lot of time now, he tells sinners, go your way and sin no more. Uh, repent, lest a worse thing come unto thee. You know what I mean? But he was very encouraging to the sinners. And the, the people who he really got rough with was the self-righteous people doing everything for a show, but their hearts was corrupted but they present themselves like they righteous and holy hypocrites, fake them. The ones that Jesus was really hard on them, the ones that Jesus was really hard on and got rough with, but the sinners, he was very gentle with the sinners. So a lot of sinners embraced them. And the Pharisees said, you know, they call him the friend of sinners you know, and he said, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So, you know, Jesus stood on business. He stood on business, though. But at the same time, he was very encouraging. You know, the world kind of embraced Jesus to a degree. And it wasn't the average sinner that took him to the cross. It was the Pharisees. It was the religious people that was in power, but they was fake. And he exposed and he rolled on a whole religious establishment. Them the ones that really hated Jesus, but they had a good amount of control on the common people. And they, a lot of times they can control the masses and they can turn the masses against you. But half the time, the Pharisees were scared to do something to them because the people regarded Jesus as a prophet and they worried about if we try to arrest them right now, the people going to stone us. See, a lot. Jesus had a lot of support from the common people, from the average sinners. And he was getting them saved, too. But, you know, everybody ain't get saved. You know, but Jesus had a lot of support from the common people. His main ops enemies was the religious people not just the average sinner. So Jesus had a certain amount of acceptance. Matter of fact, it might be Mark chapter 12. It said the common people heard him gladly. Yeah. Yeah. He had a lot of support with the common people. You know, them not the ones that was really his main opposition. His main opposition was the religious people, the ones who sitting in that position of righteousness, but they not really righteous. You know what I mean? They in authority. They supposed to be righteous, but they was the most corrupted ones. So those were his en main enemies, not the average sinner. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? People like T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen, it, they don't necessarily have to be in league with the devil. They just got ministries of encouragement. 
But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they got going on behind closed doors. All I can judge is the word. But what they got going on behind the scenes, I don't know. They that that's their business. But I know if I hear some false doctrine or something, but I don't hear that from them. I just hear mainly encouragement. You know what I mean? So even the world is gonna embrace that. Everybody wanna everybody don't nobody got a problem with being encouraged. <laughs> You weird if you got a problem with being encouraged, you know what I mean? But uh you know, I hope I hope they ain't got no, you know, demonic alliances or nothing, you know what I mean? You know, I don't know. And then another thing, <laughs> I don't <laughs> Hey, they tripping though with that one world religion. They tripping with that one world religion though, man, but I don't know, man. I don't, you know. It, it, yeah, I don't know, man. They, yeah, you, you know. Everybody want to be friends nowadays, man. They want to be friends with the Pope and be friends with everybody. But even if, okay, I'm gonna say his name, Kenneth Copeland, man. Uh, I don't know, yeah, Rick Warren, and like I don't know what these folks got going on, man. Like I, I don't know if they just trying to be friendly. I don't know if they just trying to be friendly and show people it ain't no hate from us or if they really trying to if they really trying to bring all this stuff together. Like, I don't I don't know if they really trying to push the one world religion or if they just trying to let, you know, let them know ain't no hate from us because it's a difference. It's a difference between really being in partnership, trying to do business and make something happen besides just saying, hey, it ain't no hate from me. You know what I mean? It's a, it really is a difference. So I, I don't know. And I do know that Kenneth Copeland, his ministry, he done, uh, he done done a lot of good. But that don't mean that you all the way right either. You know, you can do a lot of good, but that don't mean you all the way right. You know what I mean? So I, I just, I don't know. So but basically what I'm saying, I can't judge their life because I don't know their motives behind some of the weird stuff that it seem like they doing. I don't know their motives behind it. I don't know the full story behind it. I don't know their motives behind it. I don't know what they got going on in their life. I don't know if they really love money or are they just blessed or if they really love money or if they made a, a backdoor deal with the devil under the table. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's too, it's too confusing. You don't know a person real life unless God show you or unless you there. Only thing I can judge is the word because I don't want to confuse myself or get to speaking bad, pointing the finger because, you know, I'll expose somebody, but I don't want to get to point my finger at somebody. And then, you know, what I'm saying you be wrong and some type of judgment can come upon you. You know, what I mean, so I'll be thinking about that kind of stuff, though. But like, I don't know. I just have to say I don't know. Only thing I can judge is the word. You know, what I mean, like. I know them books and stuff that Kenneth Copeland them got. A lot of them books got good information. I don't really rock with them like that, but my mom do. I don't really rock with them like that, but my mom do. And a, a lot of them books and stuff got 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 some real good stuff though. And you can call their ministry and, and you know them the people who my mama was teaming up with to pray for me. You know what I mean? So you know them people they'll really pray with you. You know what I mean? And, you know, so, you know, but like I said, just because you're doing a lot of good, that don't mean that you doing everything good and everything right. You know what I mean? So this thing get tricky. It get tricky. That's why you got to take heed to yourself and make sure you on point. And any word that you take in, you, you got the right to judge that word, though. You got the right to judge that word, though. You know, but. I can't speak on people because I don't know what they really got going on in their personal life. I don't know the full story behind it. I don't really know their motives. It's too much that I don't know, so I, I, I'd rather not speak on their lives. But some stuff be seeming kind of weird. It be seeming kind of foo-foo, you know what I mean? But I ain't going to speak on it because I don't know the whole story behind it. You know what I mean? Only thing I can really judge is the word coming out of somebody's mouth if if it line up with the word and the will of God or not. You know what I mean? That's that's the only thing I can think of. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Anyway, well, I'm finna go to Ephesians though. <laughs> hey, the same place of blessing 
is the same place of warfare, man. He let us know that we seated with Christ in heavenly places. It says we're blessed in those heavenly places. But then another scripture say, uh, you know, we doing warfare with principalities and powers in the high places. Also translated heavenly places. So the same places of blessing are the same places of warfare. That's deep. That's deep. So that lets you know this Christian life, it's a life of blessing, right? But it's a life of warfare. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's a life of warfare. You got to have that in your mind. People coming into the faith thinking they finna uh, be laid up under a shade tree with their feet up and a pina colada, you know what I'm saying? Nah, that's not the life. Okay, Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, okay? Okay. Now give me verse 20, chapter 1. Or I'm going to go with verse 19. <clears throat> well, really, I should go to uh, <clears throat> verse 17. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to go verse 17, then I'm going to skip down to 19 and 20. But remember, the point is heavenly places. All right. Paul saying that, uh, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He talking about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us or toward us who believe. So it's a whole bunch of power behind us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, okay, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So Jesus is in the heavenly places. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places because we're in Christ. So we're in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians chapter two, verse six God have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we're in heavenly places because we're in Christ and Christ is in a heavenly place. OK, but now check this out. We're blessed in heavenly places. We're in Christ, which puts us in heavenly places. But check this out. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, also translated heavenly places. So the same place of blessing, heavenly places, is the same place of warfare. So that means you got a devil warring against all your blessings. You're entitled to blessings in Christ, but there's a devil warring against you so you won't receive all that. Because Jesus ain't going to be defeated by the devil. If anybody get defeated, it's us because we not properly aligned in Christ. We not in Christ like we should. So then we can, we can get defeated if we not in Christ like we should. That warfare can defeat us if we not in Christ like we should be because the devil ain't finna defeat Christ. And if we properly in Christ, we not going to be defeated. But remember the same place of blessing is the same place of warfare. So if you not properly in Christ, like you need to be, then that warfare is possible that the warfare can overtake you and defeat you. That mean it ain't an easy walk. That mean it ain't no, it's not no easy, breezy type of situation, man. Then he said, uh, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. 
Then he said in Mark chapter 10, if you forsook everything for me, you forsook this, this, that, and that, then I'm going to give you this, this, that, that, and that a hundredfold, but with persecutions. So that lets you know, man, it's, it's, it's going to be warfare until you up out of here, until you cross from this life to the next. It's, it's a fight. It's a battle. And the devil coming a hundred percent trying to take you out or trying to take humanity out. He, you know, he ain't going to always be focused on one person, but he focused on, on everybody. You know, the ones who he already got, he want to make sure he keep them. People say, well, the devil ain't, he only going after those. He don't go after those who he already got. Yeah, he do. He want to keep them. The ones who he already got, he want to keep them. And then the ones that he don't got, he want to flip them if it were possible. Even the elect, he want to flip them if he can. And it can happen. You can backslide and and be lost. But but I got a good revelation about that. The, the merit to the backslider. And I got a good revelation about that. All right, man. Next video.